as new inmates flood into Georgia's prisons. Some become insiders and make prison their home. Come on, man. Crazy as But others arrive already out of place. And for these outsiders, how they adapt will determine if they survive. Behind bars, there are two sets of rules, the prison protocol and the convict code. To survive one code, you may have to break the other. Over a three-year span, National Geographic followed the lives of inmates and officers in the state of Georgia. When a paramilitary system is up against convicted felons, Hey, man, tell everybody. I'll tell y'all, let's get it, man. Who's really in charge? Turn around. Face the wall. This is the world of hard time. This is the Georgia Diagnostic and Classification Prison, known simply as Jackson, home to more than 2,000 inmates. It's a world of first-timers and repeat offenders, a tough world for any inmate to find their place. Especially an inmate like Russell Rolfe. We implore you by the great power of your right hand to release the captive, accept the prayer of your people, strengthen us, purify us, awesome one. People always call me Jew. I mean, that's their first response is, you know, they see the keep on my head, and so they just automatically call me Jew. As it is written, Oran shall burn upon the altar the incense of fragrant spices every morning. When he cleans the lamps of the menorah, he shall burn it. They don't really mean to be derogatory. They might say Jew boy, because that's kind of a, a ghetto type slang, or Jew man. And a redeemer shall come to Zion, it doesn't really offend me. Lord, deliver us. May the king answer us on the day we call. I'm proud to be called a Jew, you know? So it doesn't really hurt my feelings. Happy is the people whose God is the Lord. They've adopted the name Izzy for me here, which is uh, short for Israel. Bless your name forever. Izzy is a rarity in the Georgia prison system. An outsider trying to find his path, a way to do time. It's a difficult task in a vast prison system that's bursting at the seams with hardened criminals. And for each of them, Jackson is the first stop. Here in Jackson, step in and talk to you. First word mark on me, sir. Bad word mark on me, sir, that's specified by a female. Ma'am, yes, ma'am, ma'am, no, ma'am, sir, yes, sir, sir, no, sir. Everybody understand that? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Four days each week, buses pull in from all over the state with new arrivals. This is where the system sizes up new inmates and sets the rules and expectations. I got to set a footprints on the wall. Position of attention, very important. Three reasons. We're going to do the position of attention. First reason for inspection. Every morning at 9 o'clock, you should be ready for inspect. It's a system built on conformity, where inmates try to blend in. But for those who stand out in the crowd, it could be a tough place to call home. And for an inmate like Izzy, this could be the only home he'll ever know. Russell Rolfe's mild-mannered exterior hides a troubled past of drinking and violence. His rap sheet includes arrests for DUI, aggravated battery, attempted homicide. A path that ends in a Savannah motel with his wife, four children, and an act Rolf claims is self-defense. Through the course of the night, she was very irate, um, paranoid. At one point, she was threatening suicide. Um, when she did, I tried to take the knife away from her. When we went down, her left hand came in front of the knife, and she got a wound through the webbing of her hand and on the side of her neck as we fell. When police arrive, 
the crime scene tells a very different story. During a drunken binge, Rolf punches his wife, pulls her to the floor, and slices a deep cut in her neck, all in front of his children. He's convicted of attempted murder and cruelty to children and gets 40 years. Now behind bars, the 41-year-old has set out on a singular path. Rather than assimilate to prison life in order to fit in, he's deliberately chosen to flaunt his unique identity. Despite the potential trouble that identity brings. In this particular prison, you can't really be Jewish. There's nothing here for Jewish people. To be certain, I'm the only one of my kind. I mean, I'm easy to spot. I mean, I have something on my head. As the ultimate outsider, Izzy's chosen a difficult path through prison. But few inmates survive by going it alone. And Izzy will have to adapt to find his place. You can be going along in your life, thinking that you have everything figured out in your life, and something can happen that changes all that in an instant and puts you in this environment. They're making us get dressed and de lice and all this crazy nonsense, hollering at us. On your feet, stand up! Everybody up! Look straight ahead! They gave me a jumpsuit that was like a 5X, so it looked like a big balloon. They took my glasses, which I'm like almost legally blind, so that was really scary. It does make you feel like you're less than human. Michael Wilds is an outsider of a different sort. Next man. A first timer trying to find his way. Well, you need two. You need one on your body and one in the bag. You got how many? And a world filled with cons, cheats, and thieves. You're not supposed to tell him you got extra stuff in prison. All right, Next man. Keep your hand behind your back. For now, Wilds is figuring out the rules of being an inmate and how to stay safe while surrounded by predators. If you want to define addiction to me, it would be a hole that you need to fill. Addiction to pills, cocaine, and meth starts wilds down the road to prison, all culminating in a night that forever changes the course of his life. I was 21 years old intoxicated and cold. I was in a trailer that had no heat, so I went next door to steal a heater back. Wilds is arrested, charged with burglary, and sentenced to up to eight years in prison. For his history of addiction, he thinks he's headed to a treatment prison. For the length of his sentence, Wilds lands at Jackson. When they pulled us all off the bus and got us into a single line, I was wondering why we were headed towards Jackson. We are headed towards here, walking in the building. I mean, Jackson pretty much has a reputation. You hear uh, that, you know, you're 5'8", 150, 160 pounds, you're going to be somebody's bitch, is the way they put it. There's people here that probably killed people. There's probably people here for kidnapping, you know, rape. Get online. I didn't do anything to get myself put here, you know, really. I mean, I, I did, but I didn't feel like I deserved what was happening, basically. You're not in the Army, you're not in the Navy, Air Force, Marine. This is the Georgia Diagnostic Classification Prison. In this prison, you will be classified and you will be diagnosed. Do not ask me no stupid question. I won't give you a stupid answer. Now, whatever you did out there to get here, whoever you stole from, how much meth you made and sold, 
how many sacks you sold, whoever house you broke into, whoever you killed, it does not matter to me in this building. To me and no other officer, we don't care what you did to get here, but what we care most about is what you do while you are here. Jackson may be just the right place for an outsider like Wilds. The prison's rigid control provides protection as new inmates adapt to the realities of doing time. All right, yellow and green, come on. You got green, you need to stop right there. Don't move. Wilds, Wilds. That's those three right there. But Wilds' first housing assignment is an open dorm with no cells to keep others in check. And despite the prison's efforts, sooner or later, every outsider has to stand up for themselves. I was like, all right, when I go beyond this, now I'm really, I'm gonna be, you know, by myself. That was kind of scary for a minute. I'll be honest, it really was. First word out of your mouth, this institution will be served. Last word out of your mouth will be served. Georgia's Diagnostic and Classification Prison is the front end of the state system. Everybody understand me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right, come on in. Going in the shower, right side of that table. Let's go. Make it happen. It's a prison of new arrivals, all trying to blend into the crowd while setting a routine for doing time. First, it was kind of hard for me, you know, after all my life never really working. I don't like to work. I, it's, not, it's not that I don't like to, I say I never work. I'm trying hard and, and I'm pushing myself to get into a routine. Pull in my eight hours, come home like all of us do. And see what kind of life I can live when I get out. At 52, Jose Lopez is one of the old timers here. In and out of prison for over 30 years, he's now back in again on drug trafficking charges. But even the veteran inmate is an outsider of sorts. The world of prison has changed and left him behind. It's sad, the way things have changed. Now that I'm older and I come here, I see these, these kids. I get their shanks and run around doing stupid things. They want to be the man. You know? They want the first kill. They want the first stabbing. I was there once too, but I never remember being like, like they are. Never. There are rules. You're not supposed to steal. Chain game, baby. I don't like doing time with little kids. Lopez's new reality is dominated by what officers and inmates call the 90s babies. They bring the code of the streets into prison and rule through intimidation and aggression. It's a population shift that can be seen most dramatically on the tier called A House. It's a crazy place. It's a dog eat dog. When you're weak, you're, they'll take you out. I mean, they don't give us no activities to do, so we make our own activities. They'll rob from you. They'll take everything you got. A house down for a town. We run out. Just wild, young. I've been through here before, and, uh, and it's a lot different. You older guys and stuff like, like, like me and myself. They have to watch out because young guys gonna get it. They gonna get whatever they want to get. 
that is known as a goblin mask. <laughs> The 90s babies in A-House grouped themselves into loosely bound crews. If you ain't with it, you against it, you know what I'm saying? Get down and lay down. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's how we eat. Robbing and stealing to get what they want. Life, life is going to be life, but it don't stop with no matter where you at. Hey, do we're going to eat by any means necessary. And I mean it, any means necessary. Any means necessary. A-House may be a tough place to do time. It's just as tough for officers like Travis Conklin to work their shift. 830 real call, let's go! They call A House the Thunderdome. You know, you've got a lot of the young cats, new cats that come in here. Let go, you nuts. Let go. So every day they do test you and want to see how far they can push you. I like to say that I'm a babysitter because, yes, these are grown men but they act just like children. Pull in. You got your card? Make sure you grab your card. Make sure you have your ID card. In A House, robberies and fights are the norm. And today, Conklin has yet another incident on his hands. Hey, let me see y'all's foreheads real quick. We got word from an in inmate that he was robbed. He described the inmate as a black male, roughly a little bit taller than me, that had a money bag symbol in the middle of his forehead. Big guy, let me see your forehead real quick. Just look at me. If I have to come in, I'm going to handcuff you anyways for being subordinate. Though the crime has already happened, Conklin must catch the offender to keep the peace. So this corrections officer must assume a new role, detective. Both y'all, let me see your foreheads real quick. He ain't on the back. So the guy with the money bag on his head is in there, right? He's in 121 right now. He said he still sleeps in there. 86 Conklin to A Corridor. We're gonna go up, check his room, make sure to see if he has any of the Damn. You know we ain't in here, boss hog. Oh, he's you know he ain't still. I'll stand still. All right. We eat him. That's all we all right. man. I'll let you step out right here. Go, we we'll go. You step out. You stand right here. And just like on the street, the location is searched, a weapon is found. All right, put your hands behind your back. Turn around. And the suspect is taken into custody. All right, you do know why we're doing this, right? For what? All right, put your hands behind your back. That ain't me. You were easily described by the inmate as you were the one that ran around with a mask and held a shank to his neck. No, 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 no. Make it easy. He was in the room with well, four other ones well, and he had the shank in there. This is a scene that plays out every day at Jackson, making it a tough environment to survive, especially for those at risk of becoming prey. I heard there were a couple of shanks in my uh, dormitory. There has been four or five fights in the dorm I'm in in the week that I've been here. I've heard some gang activity on going on. It's been one week since Michael Wilds arrived at Jackson, and he's been trying to keep his head down. I don't prey on anybody. I'm not trying to test anybody. I'm not trying to get into a fight. But I'm not trying to make a name for myself. I don't want to be seen. I want to be more like a ghost, really. I guess there is a certain kind of a code as to being a convict here. But from what I can tell, if you stay to yourself, you're going to be, uh, you're going to be left alone. When I leave here, maybe the records will say that I've been here, but nobody will ever know. For now, Wilde seems to be learning the ropes and how to stay out of harm's way. A challenge Russell Rolf, Izzy, faces every day. As a permanent inmate, Izzy's earned a job that gets him out of the tier. It's a job that keeps him on the move, and with movement comes opportunity the ability to pick things up from around the prison. 
and Izzy's cashing in on that freedom. You got some white papers for sale? That's what I'm asking. What do you want for it? Stamps? Two for two? Georgia banned tobacco one year ago. I need that cigarette, man. And it's become the hot contraband item. Here, a pound of tobacco can go for over $1,000 worth of commissary items. To take advantage, Izzy's remade himself as a tobacco merchant. When I look around e house, I'm still taking in a lot of information, you know, making notes, seeing, you know, who the customers are, who are low level customers, who are high level customers. You're all good. I get up and go door to door every hour, two hours, make the product available, have a light with me, you know, increases the sale here. You want a cigarette? Sure. See what you guys got going on. I don't really treat it like a hustle, trying to make a quick buck and take advantage of people. What is it? It's tell a guy to work. I treat it more like a business and giving people a fair product for a fair market value. All right, well, I'm going to walk around. Catch you guys later. Izzy's hustle is about more than money. Being the only Jew at Jackson is a solitary path. And his trade brings protection from inmates who want to keep the contraband flowing. It's a survival game, I guess. They feed me, they clothe me. I don't have to participate in all that, but it's fun. I enjoy it. Prison is great to sort of reveal your character. They say that uh, adversity doesn't build character, it reveals it. You know, I'm in a world of hustlers. I don't like fighting, but sometimes you gotta show people hard love. You gotta show, you gotta show a little tough love, a little hard love, and I've been showing a lot of hard love in my life. So you got a tattoo on your knuckles? Yes, sir. At Jackson, every new inmate confronts the same challenge, find a way to do time. But life behind bars offers few privileges and limited comfort. And despite the administration's tight control, an underground economy flourishes here. A world of illegal contraband, smuggled in and sold from inmate to inmate. You can get anything. You can get anything from Xanax to heroin, Cell phones, whatever you want, you can get in Shanghai. About half of one of these here is, is weed. If it was this much weed in there, that would be about $30 just for that. They're illegal, but they're legal to us. That's toilet tissue paper. They wrap us off with toilet paper. We got back in here, which is illegally brought in. And so we, this is what we smoke. One of these uh, costs $2, and maybe at some other camp, they might be more. Let me uh, show you right quick like, about how much bear could be in, in here. This, this is how much bear in it. Little or nothing. It's so expensive until everybody just smoke them until the fire just burn out. It just burn out of your hand. Don't nothing be left. This is how small it be when we throw it away. And it's still useful to other inmates that walks by and find them and pick it up and re-roll re it and smoke it again. Hell, myself, hell, I think a little back in here, I might keep this for myself. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> this, is, this is how we roll. <laughs> but no matter what inmates do to improve their lives, this is still prison, and going it alone is a difficult path. So despite their short stay, many diagnostics click up, each finding a role in a temporary family. This, this, this is my crew right here. That's Red. That's Red Fire Marshal Bill. He the one do all the soccer pop around here. This Gangster G, this our, this our bouncer. Yeah, and this is the quiet one. Silence trouble all the time. He do all the stealing. Yeah, he do all the stealing. <laughs> this, uh, this the gangster handicap right here. He stay in more trouble than anybody. <laughs> Nobody recognize him because they think he handicapped. Stand up, man, and show the folks who you are. I, I ain't really handicapped, though. <laughs> I just got this game going. That way I ain't got to wait in line. You know, I just go straight to the front. Well, y'all, let's show them how to chill, operate. Let me, <laughs> Wheel it round. <Yeah>. Wow. <laughs> Whenever they say I can go, I'm going to jump out of this chair and take off running. <laughs> this is our, our life in here. 
This is our life. In the permanent dorm at Jackson, Russell Rolfe, Izzy, is walking a fine line, expanding his hustle to the inmates while keeping it hidden from the staff. I live closest to the corner where the guard comes around and I'm the first person to be seen. The cell is, so if I have a sore when doing things, it's better to at least have some sort of notice before somebody comes around. Hopefully I can hear the keys. Somebody may come around and want a cup of coffee. This is called a finger, or two. And people drop by from time to time, want a finger of coffee. It's good to keep a little bombed up. It's easier to sell. They can see what they're getting. When you have something consistently, people will come around, see if you have it. I, I get a lot of pleasure out of the business aspect of, of operating and owning a business. Supply and demand, customer care, after the sales care, and things like that. It is very good for me to be able to diversify and to move from one thing to another. Uh, not just for profit, but just to keep things going where I don't have downtime. Hustling is deeply embedded in Jackson's inmate economy. And though most contraband starts with perms like Izzy, it works its way down to the diagnostics. So to keep the illegal trade in check, the system steps in every All right, day. let's do it. Each weekday morning, Warden Steve Upton inspects the cell blocks at Jackson. It's part of the daily routine at any Georgia prison. And it's vital here, at the largest prison in the state. One of the most important things we do when we walk uh, throughout this facility is to get the pulse of the prison. We have 2,292 beds, but any given day, we're usually always over 2,000 inmates in different areas. I'm in the back every single day, seeing some inmates everywhere in this prison. You got a razor? Yes, sir. No, I got a razor. I'm checking for five, sir. This goes too. If I don't know your name, uh, usually that means you're doing the right thing. All right, more. I'm here. Last Thursday, with Mr. Mintz, we'll give him a, a property before the end of the day Thursday. I still didn't receive the Thursday. More, 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 more. Hold up just a second. I hear you, OK? Make sure we do. I did tell him that last, last week. Make sure we get his property yes, to him. Morning inspection is a visible reminder of the strict control here at Jackson. Shaves look pretty good, just a uh, few clothing issues, but sales look real good. But later in the day, after inspection, the prison mood relaxes. That's when things get looser and trouble can begin. Come on, man. Come on, bro. In dorm two, Michael Wilds is seeing firsthand the temptations of doing time. As drugs have made their way into the dorm, it's a first test for the new inmate. <laughs> Obviously, they're not the right crowd to hang out with, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> well, I don't think people go to prison to make friends. It's good to be friendly, you know, but if you don't want to come back to prison, uh, stay away from the people that go there, you know? For an addict like Wilds, drugs are an easy draw, a first step down a dangerous path. But it's a path the system can block by asserting control with a surprise shakedown. The search team will be leading you to the area. 
And when we get down there, we're gonna divide up and we'll search two places at one time. Today's target, three diagnostic dorms, including Wilds's. Get up, get ready for inspection, let's go. That mouth is why you're getting what you get now. Keep your mouth shut, get up by your bunk. Extra contraband taken. Extra contraband taken. Clean it up. Hey, I'm hiding back right there. Shakedowns are regular fixtures of prison life. And lately, Dorm 2 has been gaining an outlaw reputation. Mine is hot. Yeah. When it continues to earn. See, he had this under the rack right here. And this is a, a shank, a piece of metal that he got from somewhere. First thing out of their mouth is going to be, it's not mine, somebody put it there. They found a, they found a shank under the bunk, so you know neither one is going to really pass up to a problem. Go get 73 and 74. No, this is not my bunk. Why Who was you your My bunk is right here. The top bunk is my bunk. OK, this is what we're going to do. You're going to put your jumpsuit on, you're going to get dressed, and then we'll take it from there. Today's shakedown is a success for the prison, with a shank and potential predator removed. But in prison, new dangers arise daily. A never-ending threat, not only for a first-timer like Michael Wilds, but any inmate at Jackson, regardless of his past. What matters in prison is respect, how you carry yourself how you respect the individual that's next to you. That's what matters. Jose Lopez is still settling in, still working at his job in the kitchen. And a once feared inmate is facing his new reality. That in prison terms, he's an old timer. Do a little workout, try to keep in shape. When I was younger, if there was going to be a, a fight, I wanted to be the first one in line. I was a tough guy. I stabbed somebody. I hit somebody with a sink. You sit on your back? <laughs> I got down with four guys. One of them stabbed me, and I stabbed him back a few times. You want to do your squats? It was uh, kind of kind of good. It, was, it felt good. It was uh, something that, that you, know, you, you go through, and you come out of it alive, and, and it, it feels good. If you knew me a couple of years back, you'd probably wake up in the infirmary you know, for disrespecting me like that. Or, or maybe you wouldn't wake up at all. Sooner or later, the person gets tired of all this. My bones hurt. My, my legs hurt. My knees. I'm not the soldier that I was back in the old days. I'm not that soldier anymore. Three hours south of Jackson, there's an experiment underway in Georgia Corrections. This is Coastal State Prison, a treatment program that offers a chance at early release. And unlike Jackson, where inmates find their own way, here each inmate gets individual attention that starts the moment they get off the bus at intake. Number one, I will address all staff and officers as sir, yes sir, ma'am, yes ma'am. Do you understand? Sir, yes sir. Step it out, Slim. Let me tell y'all what y'all came into. This is Coastal State Prison. Everything we do around here, we do paramilitary style. Y'all understand that part? Sir, yes sir. Come here, hero. Step here. 
Number two, read it, hero. Sir, I will always. No, you need to read louder than that. I say you got to read so they can hear you read. Sir, I will always walk on the right side of the flat top within the blue line, sir. Sir, I will keep my area clean all the time, sir. Now, everybody need to make one line right behind them gentlemen right there, facing that way. One line, one line. The strict discipline is about more than just setting the tone at Coastal. It's about getting the attention of inmates who may be headed down a dangerous path. Thanks, man. Thanks, man. One that could land them back in prison with a longer sentence than they face now. Look straight at the camera. Next. A steep challenge for Warden Jack Kuhn. There's folks we're afraid of, and there's folks we're mad at. The folks we're afraid of, murderers, rapists, spousal abusers, we want to lock them up. What are all those teardrops on your face about? Yes, sir, I hate you when I was young, sir. And then there's this whole category of folks that we're mad at. We have a shot at giving them a little something, uh, giving them the opportunity to better themselves. Gangs are nothing but trouble, you know that. Attention on that! Ten push-ups, now. Incarceration is expensive. It costs about $49.50 a day. And so if you can, if you can find another way to uh, have a person pay their debt to society, why not use it? Drop and give me 10. Let's go. Go, 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 go. Every inmate at Coastal has a nonviolent offense with a short sentence. And each gets a program in life skills, anger management, or addiction treatment. But for the most at-risk inmates, There's boot camp. Get your head down, son. You are now wasting my time. I got other things to do besides sitting there. Watch your sorry behind. Led by Officer Robert Harvey. Come here, uh, little piss ant. This is a crash course in discipline for young, potentially violent inmates. What you doing here, son? What you doing? I don't want to know. Why you ain't in school somewhere? I tell you what I'm going to do, so I'm going to give you some education. You want to stand up? And Harvey, a former soldier himself, Make sure that each inmate toes the line. In the beginning, you're supposed to tear them down and bring them back up. Hopefully, it's just shock there. What do you hear? What makes do you? you special, son? Why you what makes you here? special? He Is that why you're here? here? I don't wait for nobody. You understand that? What make you think the whole program got time to wait on you? Why are you waving your hands up, son? Wrap it up like you told me. And here, you got to be afraid of me. Or I'll fix it where you are. There ain't no mercy. He don't understand nothing. Obviously, he don't, but he's got a tattoo on his forehead, and maybe he can read it in the mirror. Ain't something wrong with you, son. They came here bullies. I'm the bigger bully. See, they blew the one papa. It's an aggressive approach and the toughest path at Coastal, designed to keep inmates in check. Get your ass up. And whether predator or prey, all are held to the same standard. You start to lose it a little bit, get a grip now. Yes, sir. You ain't no no go here. Yes, sir. Don't start. You can't win. Yes, sir. You know that. Yes, sir. I don't care what he's in there for. You got to tear him down. You got to figure out who he is. Some guys will change. Hopefully, in 90 days, that shock therapy that you marching, you running, you doing PT, and that in, in and of itself will extol discipline. Now, fire your little asses out that door, along that wall, and carry your ass down there and get you a little learning. You understand? When you come back, I want you to tell daddy what you learned in school today. Hopefully, one day down the road, they'll say, you know, Mr. Harvey, he, he was a some bitch, but he helped me. Because he told me stuff that was true. Do not look down that line again unless you are directed to. Do you understand me? Sir, yes, sir. The hands on approach stands in stark contrast to the realities of life at a prison like Jackson, where the pitfalls of hustling and contraband are a daily reality. But this new experiment in Georgia Corrections is just over a year old. And whether it will work is an open question. You better get your act together. Hey, hey sweet. Man, you weak, you that weak. We're going to change that. We're going to change that. The challenge to break the cycle that keeps offenders coming back and falling victim to the convict life. Go somewhere. Get up. You understand that? Sorry, yes, sir. Come here. Oh. Come here. Go down a little bit. Right there. You tired? Rest. Hold your arms out, son. Rest. I 
work in the laundry. So instead of just being trapped in the dorm all day, the cell house, I actually get to get out and move around. It's entertaining and it passes the time. It's another day of laundry work at George's prison in Jackson. And once again, Russell Rolfe is on the move. A freedom that's helped him to build a lucrative tobacco trade. But lately, Izzy is having a change of heart. Tobacco has been really ugly for the last month. First, a guy got knocked off that was a pretty consistent supplier, and then about two weeks ago, a major supplier got knocked off, was arrested and taken from the facility. So that kind of shut it down a good bit. But for an opportunist like Izzy, when one door closes, another opens, and a new hustle is born. There's different things you can do here. I suppose if a guy was on point, he could manufacture clothes, um, pajamas or pajama tops, pants, things like that. And people would probably pay a good, good price for something like that. I couldn't really confirm or deny any of that type of activity, of course, since it's highly illegal. Un, do, trois. What are you doing? Reinforcing all the corners on the pockets. The machine doesn't really tie a knot at the end, it just kind of spins the thread, and it can come undone. With the heat on the tobacco trade, Izzy's moving to a new line of work, fixing and altering clothes in return for commissary goods. Do me a favor. I gotta spend an hour buttoning all these shirts to press them. When you take them off, button back up for me, please. You didn't know what's saying there. I'm just asking you now. I forgot, I keep forgetting to tell you. It's Chinese laundry. But behind bars, all hustles are illegal, even tailoring. And in the middle of today's transactions, Izzy's stopped in his tracks. Take the shirt down, people. Take the shirt down. Move all sheets off the cell doors. Let's go. Let's go. Get the sheets off your cell doors. Let's go. Get to your son's cell. Let's go. What is that, a sweatshirt? Yeah, it's altered. Take it off. Hey, issue is. Oh, no, no. We got your mouth. Stick it out. Stick it out. Raisins, fruits, vegetables, and there's no telling what else. Homemade alcohol is the big find of the day. But before long, the perms are back to their routines and their hustles. It is what it is. Any second, somebody can come in and just turn your world upside down, you know? Been coming in a lot lately. I come in a lot and hit like that lately. Yeah, at any second, you have to be ready for that. That's how they make it. They don't want your life to be your own. You know, it's still prison. I know you're not telling me what you do. No. Um, it's a paperclip. It's a what? Paperclip. Man, I know you're not telling the paperclip on paper. I'll throw it away. I know you're not sewing paper for my family. I'll I throw it away. What was you oh, thinking? I just accidentally got caught sewing and got my sewing instrument confiscated. Um, in this particular instance, what I gave him was a paper clip. Was that what you were actually <laughs> Not so much. <laughs> oh, God. I'm gonna get shipped to Siberia when this airs. <laughs> <laughs> Izzy may have gotten by this time by turning over a paper clip rather than a sewing needle. But he's walking a fine line. And in prison, it's only a matter of time before you get caught. Yeah, <laughs> 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 <laughs>
Check this. I like mail. It's been two weeks since Michael Wiles arrived at Jackson. Okay. Hell yeah. I got some mail. Mail, Carl. 23. Wilde's oh, yeah. classification process is complete, and his time at Jackson is nearing an end. Now, he's awaiting word on his next move through the system. But preparing for a life on the inside can bring with it reminders of the life left behind. <laughs> I got a letter from my girlfriend. I'm here because I made bad choices. I'm here because of me, not my family, not my cards that I've been dealt, nothing. It's me. But it is exciting to get a letter, kind of numbing at the same time. Because it kind of reminds you that there is life out there. It's still going on out there. Wilds faces at least two more years in prison, time that continues when he ships out from Jackson, time to consider all the mistakes that landed him behind bars. As soon as they call me out on the list at, that night and tell me that I'm leaving in the morning, I'll be that next step closer. Get my life on the road for real, you know? Everybody wants to survive because everybody wants to go home. As Wilds prepares to ship to his camp, Jose Lopez is spending another day at work. Beach two. Beach two. With half his life spent in and out of prison, the old timer is still coming to terms with a world forever changed. The life I've lived in the prison system, compared to where I'm at now, is like taking me and, and flipping me is upside down. I'm not used to having people disrespect me in any manner. I don't like doing time with little kids. They have no honor, they have no respect. I try to talk to them about the old days, about how things were. It goes through one ear and comes out the other. Like they don't have nothing inside their head, no brain. I'm still alive, see, because I knew how to respect, I knew how to handle myself, because that's what it's all about. You come to the prison system, you want to survive. I've adapted here. It's definitely like being a chameleon, learning to fit in, learning what's acceptable waiting, being quiet, seeing how things work, and then adapting, you know, as they say, improvise, adapt, overcome. Inside the prison laundry, Russell Rolf is back to his daily grind, performing his routine, marking his time. This is how it goes. The highlight of the day. The first one after work and the last one before bed. It is what it is, it's the environment that it is, and this is the experience that God has given me, and so, uh, you know, when in Rome, so to speak. No matter what they do to punish me at any time, I will never, ever stop trying to make myself as absolutely 100% comfortable as I can for my life, if it is absolutely the rest of my life. <laughs> 